for example, like I work off a five by five grid. That's my template. Um, so what I'll do is if we split it five channels horizontally, then we have the left back, the centre back, defensive midfielder, centre back, right back. On the opposite side, we'll have two centre backs to be spared. So within that, you have 6v6 plus 6. So from a starting point, I'll have the two centre backs, uh, defensive midfielder, two central midfielders between the lines, full back on the outside edge of the lines, wingers between the lines, and then the two centre backs on the opposite side. So what will happen is the ball will go north to south. We then work on the connections to split between fullback and centre back, whether it's the defensive midfielder going wide, midfielder dropping in, or two central midfielders splitting, doing what Real Madrid doing, pulling fullbacks up, whatever. So then we work off a, a positional template based on a grid system. So then I'll put, well, whoever plays right and left back, they'll go on the outside. The two centre backs will play at the top and the bottom. It might be a defensive midfielder and centre back or a defensive midfielder and central midfielder at the bottom on the other side, maybe we work on forward passes. Um, then we can work on perhaps, let's say it's 5v5 with eight on the outside. So we have two centre backs here, uh, two full backs here, and then we have flexible wingers. So if the full backs move up, the wingers move in on one side, whereas on the other side, they might place full backs and the wingers move in the opposite side. So you can then vary the positions to invert the full backs or invert the wingers. So you're always working on the shape of the midfield and the connections made in the midfield, the positional occupation of the midfield, uh, the staggering of the players on the outside to create the base, and then the movements from outside inside or inside outside of the wingers and fullbacks. So if, for example, the ball's with the right back, I might ask that the left back tucks in to be inverted and the winger stays out. Or it might be that we look for the diagonal ball when the ball is transferred from right back to right centre back. And then we ask the winger to come in to play diagonally between the lines. So it depends on on where the occupation of the space is across the midfield line, whether you play 6v6 on the outside, um, 6 v six with 6 on the outside, or 8 on the outside to work with the fullbacks and wingers and the, the partnership of them with 5v5 in the middle. So it just kind of it, it depends on what you would want, or 4v4 in the middle with three central midfielders and the striker, for example. So... To try and put it into a context where if you have enough players to work all the positions within the team and how they work together. So most of it becomes like subliminal learning. So I'm telling you, when you move in here, that's your space. Therefore, the other one goes, well, if they move in, I have to move up. You don't necessarily tell them all these things. They have to then work non-verbally to go, well, that one goes in, so I move up. Or that one's dropped deep, so I go high, so this one comes round. So you can teach them about the occupation and movement of space as the reference point rather than the reference point of the ball or the teammate. Because the space is in relation to where the opponent block moves. And they move depending on where the ball moves. So therefore, our teammates have to move in accordance with the space. That's my way of doing it. It might be completely wrong and it might be completely ridiculous, but it helps me get my point across and I show them the grid. So I think that's the way I would do kind of positional possession games, um, of which there are... I only use about eight different ones. I don't have a library of... 60 different possession practices. I find what's the most refined ones for getting my ideas across. I'm working on connections in front of the midfield line. I'm working on penetrating the midfield line. I'm working on wide rotations. I'm working on creating wide overloads. I'm working on switching play to create an isolation. I'm working on just retaining possession to provoke them. So then I have different um, practices and different templates for how to do each aspect of a positional game. So I don't know I don't know what Adin and, and Eric would say about that, but that's kind of my way of doing it. I try to make I'm not ever going to be a rocket scientist. I try and keep the game as simple as possible and try to know over complicate stuff whenever I can. Yeah I, I think that you can find as many positional games, different ones, uh, as many different formations you can find and as many uh, movements you can find in the same formation, right? So I think that the more important for coaches and for the most and experienced coaches is to differentiate between positional games and possession games. So what is a possession game and what is a positional game? So basically in a possession game, you have two teams and one team is trying to keep possession and the other team is trying to get the ball back for their team, right? So it's a 5v5 and two neutrals, a 8v8, a 3v3 and a neutral, whatever happens in a grid or in a square or in a rectangle. Positional games have, each player has a individual position within a team organization, and at the same time, you are giving direction to the activity. So as, as, as Stevie said, uh, you are bringing north to south from center backs 
maybe to center mid or from center backs to forwards, or maybe from a center backs to the next center backs because the uh, positional game is bidirectional, right? So what I found and I noticed is that it's very important to work on the relational distance between the players. And this is an aspect that it's, it's very important uh, and more regarding technique. So you can find players that are not executing a uh, good technique. And as soon as you are, um, as soon as the relation between them becomes better, they now you notice that the technique is better. So what makes the team roles or what makes the teams to show that they are playing as a team or they are doing a good collective technique is the, the, the relation distance between the center back and the center mids, between the center backs and the full backs or the full backs and the attacking midfielders. And that's something, or at least for me, is one of the main points to be working on the positional games. Yeah, referring to the question, how I like to organize my positional games, it really depends on, like they said, it can be different parts of the field, different directions, different distances that you're working on. You might be working on something like combining in it within a tight space on the wing. You might be working on something like keeping your spacing across the entire pitch. It might be, and I often do it where I just want specific players in a drill that I just want them to work on their scanning and their and their decision making. And they might be put within a positional game that's not really referencing our positions um, of our usual structure, but it's a little bit of practice that might translate to what they do on the field eventually in their position. And of course you do the ones where you have them in their normal positions and it can vary the distances. Um, there's a difference between positional possession, obviously in a different kind of possession that he was referring to. You can have a normal possession game 5v5 with a neutral, as Eric said, or you could have positional game, which is all it really means is you focus on the position in a sense. You keep your position to try to find passing options to yourself and you keep your position instead of dribbling out of your position however long distance. In a more free possession game, it's just about keeping the ball. There's no goals to go to. So it's more difficult to say, let's have a possession game of 5v5 because usually when you try to keep possession and there's goals in the game, then you have a goalkeeper advantage, which is always what you can build from. But when it's a real possession game with no goals, it's harder to have even numbers, so you add in neutrals. And the more free possession drills are ones that I like. I tend to like those drills and then give bigger spaces than I would for a strict positional game. I do more free uh, positioning and then a free possession game in a bigger space with some neutrals, just so they have to learn in a more chaotic, complex environment how to find their distances when there's no directional uh, way to go with the goals and things like that. And he's asking how or how I organize. And uh, he says, how you organize and if you think there are different kinds of possession, which are all of them, I think you can have, as they said, millions of different positional games. All you have to do is create a possession game with different position, strict positionings. And then that can be all over the field that can have target players that can have players who are just acting as a bounce off player. And then you can have different kind of possession games where it's basically any game you have without goals and it's just 